All right, so today we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, inequalities. Uh, this is uh, the entire chapter five, so I'm going to try to cover the main things that you need to know for this whole chapter. We're going to maybe watch this video and then maybe come Monday, you'll be able to do some homework in class. So pay close attention. Here we go. We're going to go through the, there's really only three types of linear inequalities that you have to know. We have uh, a linear in two variables. That's uh, this guy here. And we have quadratic in two variables. And we have quadratic in one variable. This is the three types. There's actually just these three types that you have to know about. So before I go anywhere, let's just talk about what each of them mean. So let's just look at that for a second. Linear. What do I mean by that? Well, all you have to do is remember what kind of uh, shape on the graph you're going to be looking at. Linear, of course, y equals, I guess sometimes we write it like that, y equals mx plus b. And two variables. When I'm saying there's two variables, it means that when you look at the equation that you're given in the problem, you see both an x and a y. We don't know what the x or the y is. It's a general form. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, um, the quadratic, once again, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Exactly what you think. And it's in two variables. So and once again, all I know is an x and a y. I don't know what either of these are. So um, you'll be given an equation where the y and the x is unknown. But here's the, the one that might get a little tricky. And it's definitely the one that most students have tried with. We have a quadratic, so let's see, we've got the ax squared plus bx plus c. But in this case, you will be only given one variable. In other words, there will only be an x, no y. And so this is a sign, when you see that, when you can see that there's, instead of a y, you're being given a number, a specific number. That's when you know you're going to do something very different. Now these two guys, these two guys here, they're more or less the same thing. There's really only one thing you're ever going to be doing with these two situations. There might be a word problem, but mostly what you're doing is graphing this. So I want to start out with that. I want to start looking at the two variable situation. So let's take a look. There we go. Linear in two variables. So I'm just going to give an example because I know um, this is probably not going to be a very difficult thing to talk about. Let's look at one. Why? is less than two-thirds x plus one standard so the question is is like how do you graph this so the way i suggest you do it is you first let's just do the steps here first is you graph the equality now what do i mean by that when you graph the equality that means in this case for this guy i'm replacing I'm replacing the less than with an equal sign. So I'm just simply graphing y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. That's all you got to do. Just graph the line. Just pretend it was just an equality. And then after that, then you have to say what side shaded shaded. And lastly, you have to say dotted or solid line. That's really the only thing you need to do. Those three steps and you've got it in the bag. Okay, so let's just take a look what the graph actually looks like. Bang, here we go. Okay. So as you can see, what did I do? First I graphed the line. Here's the line right here. That's y equals 2 third x plus 1. But then I got to decide what side do I shade? Now, I mentioned there's a few ways you can do this. Either you can just look at this carefully and say, okay, wait a minute, all the y's that are less than the line. I have to include everything. I have to include any y that gets included. So if I look at this, I'll say I take the, the graph, uh, let me see, I'll just take a random dot here. Okay. If I look at that there, well, what is 2 thirds x plus 1 for x equals, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Well, it looks like that for x equals 6, your y is going to be, there it is, 4. In other words, what I'm saying is what y's are less than 4 along this line, along right here. So if I think about it, okay, well, if I did, say, a y of 10 up here, well, that is clearly bigger than 4. So I don't shade it, but you're going to include any of the y's down here. So that could be, say, 2, 0, negative 5, negative a million. It doesn't really matter. So there's, there's an infinite amount of points that actually would be included in this equation. Another way to look at it is you're going to look at this and say, when is this statement true? That's what you want to do. You want to ask yourself, when is this true? So, for example, one, one other thing that people do sometimes, they call the zero test. Because you can always find the zero. Here it is, right on the origin. And you plug it in. So your y is zero and your x is zero. So let me just, let me just do that here. Zero is less than two-thirds times zero plus one. So I get a statement, zero less than one. And then I ask myself, is this true? Well, yeah, zero is less than one. It's less than one, which means zero, the origin, is part of the side that gets shaded. So it's a really easy way of doing it. It's nice using uh, zero, zero, because a lot of things cancel out. You're, you, you can do the math really quickly. So I always suggest you do the zero test. If you're not sure what side of the line to shade, zero test. Plug in zero, zero you're going to get that answer really fast. So here I go, zero, zero test, zero is less than one. Is that true? Yep. So that means all the same side that has the zero, zero and every other point is going to get shaded in. <clears throat> now, the last thing you got to decide is what about the line itself? What about the line? Well, let's look at this. I have to include the line if my statement says I have to include it. So what times does it get included? Well, I say it's dotted if it's not included. I say it's solid if it is included, if it's part of the true statement. So if I, these are the basic rules. I'm just going to tell you the rules. If I have a less than or a greater than, I'm going to dot that line. If I have a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, I'm going to keep it solid. That's it. That's the rules. That's all you got to know. If you know those things, you're done. This is it. That is everything you need to know about linear and two variables. If you got this, you follow the three steps. You can do the zero test. If you're not sure what side to do it on, you're done, baby. This is it. Okay, so let's move on to the next type. Next type of inequalities. Nope, not that one. Well, can we do that one? Yeah, let's do this one too. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, here we go. I got myself uh, another equation. It's y is greater than or equal to 2 outside of x plus 2 squared plus 1. Okay, so first off, what are the rules? The rules are exactly the same as before. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the three steps. First one, I am going to graph y equals 2 outside of x plus 2 squared plus 1. What does that look like? Well, you got to remember your transformations. Here we go. What are you going to do? x, uh, my vertex, it starts at 0. It moves over negative 2, and then it goes up 1. Negative 2, up 1. Like I said, transformations, I, I, I tell you guys, after a while, you got to get used to using those transformations. You can do these things so much quicker. So then I got a, a two, a, a vertical expansion. I should write these down. Vertical expansion times two. This was my uh, horizontal translation minus two. And this is my horizontal translation plus one. So I take my, very, my, my vertex. I moved it over negative two, up one. And then I know, if you remember, my original graph is like here, right? It's like one up, and then the next one would be four up, one, two, three, four, like that. But now I've multiplied those by two. So now this one was one up, and now it's going to be two up. And the other one was one, two, three, four up, and now it's going to be eight. 
there. And since I got an axis of symmetry, I can very easily go bang, bang, done. So I got my points. Okay, let's draw the graph. Let's draw what it looks like. So it's going to go like that. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Don't forget your arrows. Never forget your arrows. Okay, so that is y equals 2 outside of x plus 2 squared plus 1. I got that. Now, step 2, got to figure out what side to shade. Now, if you're not sure, once again, do the zero test. All right. You know what? I'm going to do the zero test. I'm not so sure. I kind of can tell y must be bigger than this line. It must be bigger than this line. What side of this, though? Quadratics are a little funny because it's not as simple as linears, which are a straight line. It's very obvious. So sometimes it might make it a little strange as to what side do I shade. So let me plug it in. I'm going to plug in 0. 0 less than or equal to 2 times 0 plus 2 squared plus 1. What do I got? 0 is greater than or equal to. Uh, let me see. That's 2 squared, 4 times 8. 8 plus 1. That's 9. So is 0 greater than or equal to 9? And I would say not true. This is not true. Cannot, that means 0 is not part of what I shade, which means anything that's on the side of the 0, anything on the other side is. So this is not my shading area. Nothing in here I should shade. Where should I shade it? Well, on the other side. I'm going to just use some lines here. Here we go. There we go. Now, I've shaded my side. Now what do I do? Last thing. Do I have a dotted line or do I have a solid line? Well, if I look at it, I realize this is one of the ones that gives me a solid line because of the equal sign. There's an equal sign there. The line is included as part of the true statement. It's part of what is true. So it remains solid. That means I'm done. Uh, if I was going to do this properly, I would probably want to label this. Now, this is interesting. If I pointed this line, should I say y is greater than or equal to 2? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm pointing at the line. This is actually y equals 2 outside of x plus 2 squared plus 1. I have to be careful. If you label this, you can't say greater than or equal to because I'm pointing at this line. And this line is only y equals. So be careful that a lot of people make that mistake. So try hard not to do that. And I might point out a point here. Maybe I'll label the point uh, negative 2, comma 1. And there, I'm finished. Okay, so that's both uh, quadratic and linears in two variables. Uh, next video, I'm going to talk about linear or quadratics. Actually, sorry, quadratics in one variable, which is a little trickier. So it's the next video you want to pay a close attention to. But for now, uh, relax. Remember, these are videos you can... Uh, you can rewind. You can look at this again. You can look at this 15 times for all I care. See what you can learn from this. Make sure you understand this because uh, on Monday we're going to be doing a lot of practice. And you want to make sure that you know how to do this before you come to my class. Okay. See you then.